Welcome back everyone to another episode of Ritz Gadgets. Today I'm going to do an update on my DIY power wall. And what I want to do is kind of give you a follow up of how I've got it set up, configured, and some of my gear. And what I'll do is I'll post a link to the video I did prior to this one about configuring the BMS system because I know there was a lot of questions on that. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. I will also link below all the items that I've used in my power wall. Um, I'm using the affiliate links now through Amazon, so it's helping my channel out by you guys clicking on the links and ordering items. You don't have to buy the item that I specify, but if you click on the link, go to another item and buy it, I do get some credit for it. And what I'm doing is I'm putting that money right back onto the channel so I can bring new gadgets and everything onto the videos. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I've got set up here and how I've got it configured. Okay, the first thing I'm going to start you off with here is my solar panel. Right now I'm running a one panel, 100 watt configuration. This is not enough to power my whole battery bank. So right now I'm looking to add a second and possibly third panel to the system because I do have to kind of charge uh, at a lower capacity with this type of configuration because I don't get enough voltage out to charge a full 7 series type battery pack. But this is my uh, solar panel and uh, like I said I'll leave descriptions and links in the comments below. And first thing I'm going to start you off with is the EP Ever um, Wi-Fi module here. And what that's doing is it connects to the EP Ever Tracer series uh, charge controller. It's an MPPT charge controller and that is a Wi-Fi dongle so I'm able to read and configure this EP Ever Tracer series from inside the house without having to come out to the panel here. And below that I have a couple of breakers. The one on the left is for the solar panel. The one on the right I can turn the whole battery system off and isolate it from the, uh, the charge controller. And then tucked right there in the middle, um, kind of hard to see, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. That is my buck converter. I have that coming out of the um, EP Ever there. And that is regulating my voltage down to then uh, monitor the, the BMS system. That's just the, uh, the controller for the version 4 BMS, which is basically a uh, little Wemos board. And then I'll back away here and show you here is the panel, or the uh, the actual batteries with the BMS controllers hooked up. Um, right now I am running a 3 series just so I can charge them. Uh, like I said if I put them in all 7 in a series this panel will not charge them. So what I do is I'll do 3 and then either do the other 4 or just keep rotating down and I have it set up where the voltage of the uh, charge controller should kick in before the balance modules have to kick in. So, but if I do have one running a little bit higher, it, of course it's going to kick in and start pulling it down. So that's, uh, that's how my setup is out here. I have it just in a, a box outside. Um, it's been cold some days, but it's, it's fared pretty well. So that's it for the outside hardware. So okay, now that I have given you an overview of how the hardware is, I wanted to come inside and show you on the computer how I'm monitoring the entire setup. Um, first of all, with the EP Ever, uh, you can add the Wi-Fi dongle to it. And there's several tutorials out there on hacking it. It's basically, uh, you change it. it. It has proprietary software but it is running as an access point so you are allowed to um, connect to it directly and what I'm using is I'm using this NetBurner virtual com port and what I do is just go in here and you edit it and select a com port and you give it the host name and the port of 8088 and what that does is now it allows the EP Ever software because um, this is, it requires usually a, a physical connection, but because you're using a virtual COM port, now you can use it with the Wi-Fi dongle. But this is how you can connect 
configure and work the system remotely. Um, so what I've got here is, you know, this just shows you, you know, how the voltage is right now. The panel is putting out 22 uh, volts at, uh, well, 0.48 watts. So um, it's not a lot of sun today. It's kind of overcast. Uh, but anyway, I want to go into the parameters um, and show you what I've done here is, is here's your control parameters. And I was saying that you can configure these and I'm just going to do a read. And what it'll do is I have these set up as a user configuration. And right now, like I mentioned before, I am running a, a four series right now. I said three, but it is four. Um, and what I've gotten here is I've got several uh, configurations. So if I want to run just two cells, three cells, four, you name it, or if I'm going to run all seven, I have different ones in here. And I can just come up here and I can do import settings and it will, I have them saved and see I've got three packs, four packs, seven packs. So I could just upload e any one that I want and just have it reconfigured re really easy and I'm up and running and minimal downtime. So this is how you can configure it and I will put the cell voltages, the individual cell voltages I use and then you'll just multiply them by three, four, or five, whatever series you're going to run it in. Um, that's all I ever do is to, to come up with the numbers. So this is it as far as the, the software, as far as the EP ever monitoring. And then we'll come over here and I'll show you how the, the BMS is running. So right now I am topping off uh, these four batteries here. You can see they're all a little under the... Uh, what I'm, I try to keep them up to like 4.05 is about my max. Um, so, or 4.07 has been the max. Um, and really, we've had some rain the past few days. So these were topped off and just running the Wi-Fi and the BMS, it does pull a little bit on them, but it's not too terribly much. It would last weeks out there with no sun um, <clears throat> as much as they draw. But uh, here you can see it gives you your, your um, temperature values. And when these get topped off, it's got the resistors on there. So you can kind of tell when one of the cells has reached its capacity. You'll start seeing the temperature go up on those cells. Right now it's pretty cool outside, so they're pretty low right now. And you can go into the individual modules. And what you want to do here is you want to check the capacity and of each of your cells and make sure it's calibrated. Uh, you want to go in and, and make sure that the each cell is what's being represented, represented on here. And you just go into the configure settings and just take your multimeter, check what you really, your value is, and then it will come up with a multiplication factor for you. And here you can set your maxes uh, rate. And what you want to do is you want to put it at the same max as your, your BMS, uh, the EP ever. So that way it gets pretty close to the top. I have the EP ever cut off before the max is hit on the, the cells. So I shouldn't see any uh, capacity issues or it having to dissipate any capacity, extra capacity. And that is it. Um, I know some people have talked about integration with MQTT. Um, I did configure this with my server. I run HomeSeer, uh, Home Automation. I don't have it set up right now, um, but I did test it out and it does export all the values to an MQTT server, which is very nice. I could import it into my Home Automation then I can have triggers on that home automation to send me alerts if uh, I have cell values going below a certain number and uh, yeah, you name it with, with that software. Um, but I have, like I said, I don't have that configured right now. But anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. Um, I really appreciate the, uh, the comments that I've been getting. Uh, I know I haven't been as diligent on videos uh, I've been pretty busy at work lately, uh, but I do want to keep the videos coming. And like I said, I'm linked to all of the 
the items that Amazon does sell that I'm using, I will link them below through affiliate links and I appreciate it if you could help my channel out by clicking on a few of the links because like I said every little bit helps and anyway I do appreciate it you know have a great day and if you have any comments or questions drop them below thanks